Hey guys, it's Jin here. So recently, I saw a lot of people worry about COVID, and they said that hey, I want to get an air quality sensor that can measure whether I have enough air, enough oxygen in my house or not. Uh, and usually, what we talk about it, we talk about the CO2 sensor, carbon dioxide sensor. So this can actually measure your house, how much carbon dioxide in your house, uh, the air quality right now and give you a rough estimate that, hey, should you open the window or not, or should you not, or should you, should, should you just continue close your window because you have enough oxygen. So let's start and check it out. So I checked online and said that, hey, we need this kind of technology, but the problem is, it's quite expensive. I mean, uh, used to my time, I remember a proper CO2 sensor cost around 700 to 1,000 ringgit. This is actually quite expensive. And we look around at, hey, what if China have made something cheaper? So I go into that and search about it. So we check online, hey, hey, and we look at it, so cheap. We have like 57 ringgit, uh, 90 ringgit plus, and there are some expensive ones and stuff like that, but pretty much it's within 100 ringgit. So we click inside here, it will tell you that you do everything. You can do all the checkout, all the details, everything and that. And it comes with the batteries. So I actually bought one. As you can see here, this is now on battery. Uh, I actually disassemble it. Uh, later I show the video what inside here. Technically, it's just a mini box. It has basically a battery here. There's one sensor around here and another temperature sensor around here. So I was wondering, how can this possible? Do you know that? This kind of sensor is actually quite expensive. Uh, take an example and say, uh, the, the cheapest certified calibrated CO2 sensor that I know so far that can easily bought is actually SenseAd. And even the new original one will cost you around 150 ringgit. So how can this device who claim that he is actually cheaper than the sensor that they can bundle in itself? So let's find out. Hi everyone, so I'm going to show you uh, what is inside the system here. As you can see here, inside is actually a chip, uh, basically a clone STM32. Uh, should be a F4, uh, F0 variant. And then you can see this is the switching capacitor. This is a JTAG for flashing. Uh, the model number here is, uh, let me show you here. The model number here is XF. XF. SS20ML039 is actually quite popular. Uh, it's actually one of the common board they actually make in China, and a lot of them are actually using the same board. As you can see here, they actually didn't put on the buzzer as well. So there's the model that actually have a buzzer, and then there's another one that actually come out with a USB uh, battery sensor, everything as well, which I didn't turn up. And this is the battery connectors. So actually, what happened is this. When I bought this, and then I said, hey, something wrong with this thing. So I currently, you see, actually connecting some connect, uh, connections to my serial bus to actually figure out what actually data actually getting out from this. But first, let's take a look at the device itself. So this is the sensor module. This sensor is called, uh, let me turn it around. This sensor is called TPM. 300A V2.2 and the, the technology is really quite simple. This is the sensor that actually heat up and you're using a sensor heat up and there's a ceramic uh, sensor inside here. Uh, all the air that passed through here will actually uh, detect it and then output. But I wonder how this is able to do a CO2 test. So I actually go out internet and find out the details about the, the information here. As you can see here, you only have a ground 5 volt uh, the serial A, serial B, the uh, RX and TX. So currently we actually ping out to our Arduino to actually here to actually see the data uh, in real time. Let me show you the data. So, so here's the data. As you can see, this is actually the same board that we can see here, uh, same design. Uh, basically, basically it's actually a sensor chip. 
with a cedar chip to actually read through the whole thing. And let me go down to the the spec itself. As you can see here, spec. Let me put here the thing. As you can see here, uh, let me scroll up here. Up. Okay. So the device here is running on the UART. And if you can see here, it say that it measure uh, TVOC, it measure CO2, it measure HCOHO, and this is the amount of precision it get. It take around 10 seconds, less than 10 seconds to actually read the, the data precisely. It need around two minutes to actually uh, come back from life, uh, come back from a cold, cold start, and around 60 seconds to actually heat up, to actually work out. So the only problem with this, it have all the spec, everything, uh, all the data bit, everything. You can see the data bit here is showing the what kind of data it come out from here. So we see that the first two channels is actually two C E H uh, E four is actually the, the the sensor itself. As you can see my reading here, I reading I getting reading out uh, or the correct data two C E four zero five zero D zero one zero B. These are all the data coming out from here. So only problem is this. I, I wonder how is this thing compared to sense air where a single CO2 sensor is cost more than 100 plus ringgit. So I look around what kind of sensor it used. So it show that the sensor it used here is actually TP401T. So TP401Z uh, T here is the spec itself. Uh, it's a very simple sensor here. As you see, it's only four pin. And honestly speaking, you look at the, the result we come out, we only show uh, very simple stuff. And we managed to find out the detail about the, uh, the, the technology itself. So here's a sensor, that, that's a TP401 air quality sensors. So you look down at the data it sends out. This is actually a very simple thing that we actually come out. And I don't see any way this simple sensor able to do CO2 sensing and all the other things, uh, all the other gas sensors uh, detection. This at most can only do uh, so-called like how much considerations of the VOC air out there. This is actually not a CO2 sensor. As you can see down there, we can see the data here. This technically you can see how this thing works. It actually have a 5 volt in, 5 volt uh, heating up this thing and there's actually a measurement that comes measuring the, the heat, how much resistance around the heat on the sensor side. So you need to put one value. So how can well, one value uh, signal, a, this is a one value sensor, how can it able to output all this value at all? So the only conclusion you can get is this chip is actually faking it up. So it takes one single output and then tries to interpret the output out of nowhere and then show you the data. That's why you will see a very, very unaccurate result at all. So this is the, the data sheet, this is the English version. As you can see here, it say the target gas is actually uh, just measure everything. You see, it measure everything, but there's no specific data on how it measured in the first place. So it just come out a respond with the voltage difference and that's it. There's only one data come out. There's no way you can use a one data output and then come out with three different very precise PPM data from the system itself. So this thing is actually definitely fake. Don't buy this. So this part actually come like this and uh, you can see uh, it's actually a very simple design a VOC sensor here and then the temperature sensor. The temperature here, I look around the inside core inside here, is most probably just a DHD11, which is a very, very, very inaccurate sensor at all. So this is pretty much push it. So let us power on this thing for X for the test. So let me plug in the power. So when you plug in, you actually power out the device, and you can just power on. So this thing will actually start counting, and there's a countdown meter that actually uh, hit basically a drop down countdown to actually see how long you you take out to heat up. 
and then you output the three result from there. So honestly speaking, this actually getting a precise uh, serial output from here, which three serial output. Uh, technically, is, as you can see here, let me show you my screen over here quickly. So as you can see here, you actually get three C output. So the first two is actually the address of the device itself. 005D is actually the, the readout for the CO, CO2. The second one is the DVOC, and the last one is actually the, the HOC, uh, HCHO, and the last one is actually the uh, error counter bit, the, 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 the checksum bit itself. So it did output a result for this thing. The only problem is, you can see here, the only problem here is the, pro, the, the whole device here, let me show you right here again. The whole device here, this sensor itself, only output one data. How can it come out like three data point and up to sub such uh, detail to actually come out to here. So this chip is actually picking up. There's no way you get all this data from a single reading. A single analog reading from this is unable to produce you such precise data. So something is wrong and this one you can check on the internet. This similar sensor TPM uh, 300AV 2.2 it's only cost around 20 ringgit. So compared to Sense Air, uh, let's say the, the S8, Sense Air XACO2 sensor itself, that one alone is around 150 ringgit Malaysia. So nope, this thing don't buy. As uh, you can see here, it's, it's just crap, you can see. Without me doing anything, it just move around and my air quality, you can see I just cover my hand over the sensor here the idea of this will shoot up, which is impossible because there's nothing changed in my air. So this thing, don't buy. So the conclusion here is, do not buy this thing. This is a piece of shit. It's worthless. It will tell you no data at all. Even the temperature and humidity is actually very, very low quality. Uh, I have tested quite a number of DHT11 and or DHT22. They will not show you the precise temperature and humidity, and it will be different. Maximum sometimes go up to three degrees, and humidity even worse. Uh, I have seen two similar sensors put side by side with the humidity. One is 40, and another one is 67, which is kind of like totally rubbish in data. You know, talk about it. So what sensor, this sensor actually provide the data is, it's actually the only data you actually can uh, pre precisely provide is actually this four bar below, as you can see here. So the sensor inside the PMS uh, series is only able to do, tell you that uh, your air is a better situation here, or slightly worse, uh, bad, or alert. That is the sensor inside they're able to do. There's nothing else. They cannot do anything. All these data are bullshit. These are all fake data. It's technically the same as the scanner that you scan and she count out data. There is no data at all here. So for 90 bucks ringgit, you're basically getting a mini Arduino uh, or STM32, even that is a chrono so a screen. A battery, uh, a single cell uh, 3.7 volt lithium battery, a very bad quality temperature and humidity sensor, and a totally bullshit uh, sensor itself, the, the air quality sensor. Do not buy this. So that's all for my sharing today. Thanks. Bye bye.